Hello, everyone, and welcome. It is Wednesday. The Nawad Bolide crew is assembled, and we are going to show off. We just picked a meteorite today at random. Well, not really random. I just got my first sample of this meteorite, and I wanted to show it off to the crew. So I was like, hey, guys, who else has a piece of Cape York? So that's the meteorite we're gonna show off today. A little bit of Cape York. This, like I said, is my first sample of it in uh, eight or nine years of collecting. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is my personal sample and we, we're gonna tap the crew to tell us more about this meteorite. But this is 37 and a quarter grams of Cape York, which is of course, as you can see, an iron meteorite. It is from Greenland. Now I know that it has a storied history to it, including we were just talking about why most samples of Cape York are rectangular with no external slight external edges. So um, who has some facts that I, I know Mike had, had some facts that he wanted to share Mike Kelly and then anyone after him can just take off if they want. Sure. So uh, Cape York is now currently the ninth largest single mass meteorite in the world. Um, there's multiple stones. The uh, largest one is uh, Athena del Guido, um, and it's 34 tons. Uh, and that's the one that's on display at the American Museum of Natural History. Um, Agphilic is the second largest piece, and that one is 20 metrics tons. And that one's at the uh, Geology Museum, uh, located at the University of Copenhagen in Denmark. Um, some of the interesting facts about uh, Cape York, uh, like you were saying, Topher, is it does have uh, a lot of uh, historical relevance. Um, it was uh, found, you know, to uh, to the Westerners in uh, in 1818, but it was known to the local people for a lot longer, where it was used to uh, make things like harpoon points uh, and other metal objects, because back then there was no availability of, of iron. Oh, really? Um, I, they actually use it as, in harpoon tips? Yes, I, it was actually used to, used to make tools. And some of the interesting things are there are actually uh, stone artifacts uh, in huge piles out there. Um, none in anybody's collection because uh, they're mm -hmm. protected. Um, but yeah, the, uh, it's the equivalent of uh, the stones you would see for, uh, for working things like arrowheads, but they were using it to work the iron. Uh, wow. So that's... Uh, Pretty interesting fact that those are all still out there. There's a couple of them in museums. That's um, fantastic. Let's let's yeah. go ahead and we're going to highlight another uh, piece in someone's collection, and we're going to still tap you on the shoulder for facts, Mike. Okay, and, until sure we've until we've run that well dry. <laughs> uh, Cal, can we see your piece? Yeah, let me get the share going here. That bond up <laughs> looks amazing behind you, by the way. Oh, it is super, huh? <laughs> just wish it was life-size huh <laughs> yeah see again we have another square piece that's like right yeah this is a this is a small piece uh 7.1 grams uh this is a medium oct octahedrite and it's from the uh agpolilic uh mass so uh uh listed as greater than uh, 15 tons by uh von buchwald there uh, and it's just a very nice uh, Vidmanstetten pattern that's uh, easy to see. Yeah, it's actually classified as a 3AB, I yeah. believe. Um, Mike, do you have any other facts on it? Bookwald found one of those. I, that might be the one that he found himself. In, in 63, yeah. Oh, wow. That's great. Well, we also have, uh, thank you for sharing that with us. Really appreciate it. We have Dave Pinsky as well. Um, this is uh, the one I have. It's about a centimeter in size, not a very big one, but <clears throat> I have a stamp that uh, commemorated it. And what's really cool is the, the stamp actually has the Whitman statin pattern from that meteorite. Uh, so that's about all I really know on that. So, wow, that is, I'm really super happy that you had this in your, this yeah. ephemera, uh, something uh, to accompany your meteorite that's temporary yeah. is ephemera. This yeah. stamp is super cool. 
and there's a lot of uh, stamps for meteorites, but I think we mentioned earlier, this is one of the very few that actually has the, the Vidman Staten pattern actually on it. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Thank anyway, you very much. What I got. Really appreciate it, man. No problem. Uh, Art Wagner, what you got going on, buddy? Well, we'll see if we can make this work, so. Art, wow, you have a nice one. And Art doesn't have a square. That's <laughs> right. And this was acquired by me from Robert, Roberto Vargas. This piece was actually, I guess, in the Copenhagen Mo uh, Museum. So I was able to acquire this from Roberto. So yeah, it's, it's not a rectangle, that's for sure. <laughs> You're the winner. <laughs> yeah. Art, yep. I'm so I'm so glad we we're able to get your your camera in focus and everything working like because that was definitely worth zooming in on. Yeah, and this is 16.9 gram slice. So wow. And uh, Art said it is for sale. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I have to find my stamp and share it with you guys. But uh, the stamp, uh, I believe, I have a different stamp, but I could be wrong. But the stamp is of Cape York, uh, and it was actually given to me by uh, Carlton Moore, mm -hmm. the founder of the ASU Meteorite, uh, Center for Meteorite Studies. And it was given to him from Book Bushwald, the guy who actually studied and discovered and was, is very famous for his study of, of iron meteorites. So uh, does anyone know any other interesting facts about it? I The one I learned today was the harpoon tips. That That's really, really freaking cool. I like was, that one. Was that the first meteorite found in Greenland? There's not that many uh, meteorites from Greenland. I think there's only two, I'm not sure. Admiral Perry uh, went to collect it to bring it back and uh, he couldn't get it the first time. So he went back the second time and he had to build a little short railroad from the meteorite to the boat to uh, get it on board the boat. Wow. Yeah, I think I remember that as well. There was a bunch of infrastructure built just to transport this thing over the over the Greenland tundra. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, Buchwald is was Danish, and uh, and of course Greenland was a, a Danish property. So I I think that's why he was looking. Now he found uh, the most recent one some distance away. Uh, it was either on a ledge or projecting out from a high elevation and uh that is the one i believe that uh, some of our specimens are coming from all right well this this was this was interesting we just wanted to record a little 10 minute segment of show and tell about cape york meteorite and this is the kind of fun interesting things about the hobby of of meteorites is you can go historic you can go geology you can go geography you can go out in the field, you can go into the lab, you can do uh, media. There's all kinds of ways to enjoy the hobby. And there's also ways of sitting at home watching us on YouTube. And we're glad you did. Have fun, guys. <laughs>